Oh yeah, this could be a bit of an issue. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Red Sea Radio. My name is Corbin and one of the things that we've heard so far from the Red Sox offseason, at least towards the beginning of the Red Sox offseason, is that the Red Sox wanted to get back to spending money like a big market club. We've seen it sparingly over the last couple of years. Contracts like Yoshida, Trevor Story, and Rafael Devers sort of stand out, but overall they've been pretty conservative with their dollars over the last couple of seasons. Now going into 2024, we got some hope that this could be changing, right? Tom Warren at the beginning of the offseason spoke the infamous words that are now sort of the key trademark of the Red Sox 2024 offseason, whether good or bad at this point, more bad with full throttle. On top of that, Craig Breslow also mentioned that there would be no financial limitations, but okay, you didn't spend on Yamamoto. Now, who are you going to spend on? Well, a report came out yesterday that could indicate that we could have a bit of a problem here with that sort of narrative. So what we're going to do in today's video is talk about a report that came out that could be a massive problem for Red Sox fans everywhere. We're going to break down what it is, whether or not to start getting the pitchforks out and whatnot, and what this could indicate about the future of the Boston Red Sox. But before we get into that, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Helps these videos out a ton and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. The information that we are talking about today came from an article that came out over the weekend on Christmas Eve by Mass Live Sean McAdams. It was an article that he had written about his current thoughts on the Red Sox offseason, and while it was a very good article overall, there was one excerpt in here that absolutely sent chills down my spine, and if you're a Red Sox fan, it should be sending chills down your spine as well. The quote reads, in the aftermath of the Yamamoto news, one industry official was speculating on how the Red Sox might pivot to find the necessary starting pitching. When I, Sean McAdams, suggested free agent Jordan Montgomery as a good fallback option, this official scoffed and offered that even Jordan Montgomery would be too expensive for the Red Sox current budget plans. My immediate reaction to this news is probably extremely similar, if you have not heard it yet, to the reaction you're having right now, and that is, are you kidding me? Jordan Montgomery is too expensive and out of the budget of the Boston goddamn Red Sox? To that point, that is absolutely comically, ridiculously embarrassing, right? You are one of the four biggest teams in the league in terms of revenue, in terms of fan base, and you think Jordan Montgomery is over your spending limit? That is asinine, right? That is absolutely ridiculous. But before your blood boils, before you start getting out the pitchforks and torches, let's talk about this in total for a second. Right now, this is one industry source. And over the last couple of off seasons, we've actually seen these type of industry source articles before. And I'm not saying it has anything to do with Sean McAdam. I'm not saying it has anything to do with anything. But over the last couple of off season, it's just one industry source. And we've seen them be wrong before, these industry sources. Last off season, industry sources were saying, Saying the Red Sox would never sign Rafael Devers to a, a long term contract. Well, they did, right? Industry sources last offseason said Brian Bale probably wasn't going to be a legitimate big leaguer. He proved this year that he is. In 2022, there were industry sources that said there was no way the Red Sox were going to give any money out to anybody, and they ended up signing Trevor Story. Same thing with Masataki Yoshida. Industry sources said that he would not be a solid big league player and wasn't worth the money. Well, this year, before his fatigue kicked in, he was well worth that money. This is not the first time we've heard industry sources say the Red Sox aren't going to do something and we've and before we've seen them do those things that they said they won't so on its own this isn't exactly something to absolutely start freaking out about industry sources have been wrong before and i'm not saying this has anything to do with the credibility of sean mcadam he's a fantastic writer but it's just the fact industry sources have been wrong before so in my opinion i'm not totally freaked out yet however this is starting to become a bit of a pattern this isn't the first time this off season that there have been doubts cast on whether or not the red sox are actually willing to spend like the big market team that they are, like the Boston goddamn Red Sox that they are. Earlier this offseason, Jared Carabas on his podcast mentioned a very similar thing. He mentioned that he has one very trustworthy source that mentioned that if the Red Sox weren't going to get Yamamoto, which obviously they didn't, they weren't planning on spending any money anywhere else this offseason. This was then 
echoed by Lou Maloney on Twitter as well. So now you're starting not only to get the industry source report, you're also getting ports from Red Sox personalities all over the place that the Red Sox aren't planning on spending money, which for Red Sox fans is a massive problem. Because let's be honest here, right? Big spending isn't a clear path to winning a championship. The Rangers were able to do it, but they also had a lot of young, talented core players that were already on their team. And you saw it over the last season that Padres and Mets, they spent big money and they didn't even sniff the postseason. However, big spending does keep you competitive in baseball nowadays. That's just how things work. Back in back in the early days of the FSG owning the Boston Red Sox, you were one of what? Two, three, four teams that could legitimately spend up to your power potential. Nowadays, in terms of competition for free agents, teams all over the place are spending what the Red Sox were once willing to spend. Teams like the Rangers, the Padres, but also the Phillies, the Blue Jays. Teams are coming out of nowhere and they are realizing that, hey, if we want to get these competitive free agents, we're going to have to put up the money to do that. So instead of, hey, it's the Red Sox, it's the Dodgers, or it's the Yankees or the Mets, right? Four teams in Major League Baseball. It's now half the teams in Major League Baseball can spend what everyone else can spend. And your competition is all of a sudden a lot more fierce. If the Red Sox refuse to spend money, you are going to fall behind. You are going to fall back below the middle of the pack. And you are going to be stuck in mediocrity for the rest of your time. Now, again, there are ways to build a team without spending money. And I'm not saying it's impossible for the Red Sox to be successful while spending like a mid-market team, but they shouldn't have to do that. They shouldn't have to find ways and get creative and be crafty. They don't have to do that. If you like somebody and you're the Boston Red Sox, you should be able to go out there and get that person and bring them to your team. Or if you have that person on your team and you're like, hey, Tristan Casas, Marcelo Meyer, Jaron Duran, Brian Bay, whoever you want it to be, and you say... We want this guy to be a cornerstone of the Red Sox. It shouldn't be, we want this guy as a cornerstone of the Red Sox until he's eligible for free agency. No, 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 no. You should be able to sit that guy down, say, we're the Boston Red Sox. What do you want? We want you here. Stay here for 12 years. That's how this should work. This is why fans are frustrated. This is why everyone is frustrated because reports like these continue to come out and they continue to increasingly repeat the same pattern that FSG does not want to spend like the big market team that they actually are. And this wouldn't be as frustrating to fans if the Red Sox didn't have the big fan base that they had and the prices that they had within the stadium. If they were attracted like a mid-market team, then fine, right? You are up to your financial limitations as a mid-market team, but it's just flat out not the case. You were one of the most profitable teams in Major League Baseball last year. You're one of the most expensive ballparks in Major League Baseball last year, and you're going to sit here and try and justify the the fact that you don't even want to spend on Jordan Montgomery, a guy who would immediately help your team out, and he's not even going to cost $200 million plus. He's going to be a $100 million player. You are afraid to spend the $100 million. You are now a step behind all the other competitive teams in the league, and that is an absolutely terrifying thought if you are a Red Sox fan. And it gets a little bit worse. This is all speculation right now. This could change on a dime, right? I, honestly, this could have changed before we even put Put this video out. They could have signed Jordan Montgomery last night and none of this even matters. But if they don't, then what you're looking at is a lot of Red Sox fans starting to demand that you sell the team and that's going to do absolutely nothing. I don't care if you go to Fenway Park or if you don't go to Fenway Park. Fenway Park is a national landmark. It is an attraction and it is going to fill up, especially because of the new changes in the schedule. And on top of that, you're talking about the Fenway Sports Group selling the Boston Red Sox. This is a ownership group that has built their entire empire and are building their entire empire based on the foundation of Fenway, the Red Sox, and the surrounding area. You think they're going to sell the team just because fans are upset? Absolutely not, which is even scarier because now instead of, hey, we're going to put the, we're going to put the screws to ownership, we're going to tell them to F off, we're going to tell them to sell the team, they're just going to sit there and they're going to take it because they've got four other professional sports teams that they can focus on. They've got the entire area and bar scene and everything around Fenway Park and not Fenway Park itself is still a national landmark, right? So 
what you're getting is years and years of mediocrity. And that is a terrifying thought. And to be honest with you, I don't think FSG, specifically John Henry, has legitimately stopped caring about winning. And I think he realizes as a smart businessman that you make more money when you win as opposed to when you lose. However, what I do think is starting to happen with FSG, and again, I could be wrong and this could all be proven wrong in the blink of an eye, but what I think is happening with FSG is they're realizing, hey, with these new baseball rules, with everything that's going on with the playoffs and everything like that, we don't have to build the juggernauts we had in the early 2000s or the mid 2010s. We don't need to do that anymore. We just need to get this team to 86, 87 wins. And even if they're third place in this division, there's probably a pretty good chance they're going to end up in the postseason. We're going to get the postseason money. We're going to get everything from that. Right now, what it looks like is they are not trying to build a legitimate competitive. We want to win the AL East. We want to be favorites for the World Series. It looks like they're trying to build a, we just want to try and sneak into a postseason team, which again, if they aren't going to sell the team and this is their outlook for the next couple of years, maybe even decades, it is going to be a lot of frustrating years for Red Sox fans. And that doesn't mean there aren't going to be great teams sprinkled in, but you're not going to be getting that help, those big splashy signings that you originally saw. Now, overall, I think, again, we look at this in totality and I don't think it's time to start storming gate C and really trying to put the screws to ownership yet. I think there's a lot could happen right now. This is all speculation. It's not proven fact yet, but it's very close to being proven fact. I think within one or two different moves this offseason, it could very well easily be proven fact. So right now, here's why I'm at. I am very cautiously in wait and see mode. You could tell, right? You could probably tell by this video that my blood's starting to boil a little bit and we're starting to get into really angry territory. But until they don't make those moves, until there is proven statistical evidence that they did not want to spend on a Montgomery, on a Teoscar Hernandez, on a whoever you want to put out there, then yeah, I'm going to wait and see because again, these industry sources, these very reliable sources have been proven wrong in the past and Red Sox ownership historically has not done well with a whole lot of public negativity and there's a whole lot of that going on right now. So maybe they do do something drastic and realize that, hey, we can't run our team like this. But again, this report, the Carabas news, Lou Merloni sort of echoing all of it is really, really scary. But that's just my opinion. So let me know in the comment section down below. What do you think of all this? Do you think I'm overreacting? Everyone's overreacting? Or do you think I'm not reacting enough? Or are you right in line with me? Let me know all your thoughts on this possible huge problem for the Boston Red Sox in the comment section down below. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor. Make sure you've hit that like and subscribe button. It helps these videos out a ton and would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. And I will see you in the red seats.